Okay. We're live. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Good to see all your faces. As we wait for people to sign on, I'm closing out of things and hoping it's not a mistake that I'm closing out of them. Okay, let me pull up uh, Facebook so I can see who's jumping on. We're live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how do I? Okay. So, sorry, <laughs> it's, we have this litany for Ukraine that comes up every single time we go live. And I'm glad it is there because we need to still be praying. <laughs> However, I just want to know how to make things not be pinned automatically for every live. Oh so if gosh. anyone knows, please let me know. Is it StreamYard? Is it Facebook? I have no idea. Okay. That's so funny. Hi, Naomi. Hi, Tammy. Can anyone tell me why I'm echoing? Is it someone else? Somebody else? has on original sound or whatever that usually creates an echo. Probably Jonathan or Aurelia. What? Don't. <laughs> I have on echo cancellation, just for the record. Um, okay, so as people are signing on, we are going to start sharing some announcements because we have so many. The first thing is that we have a guide that you can uh, follow along with everything that's happening. So as soon as someone drops that guide into the comments, I will pin it and it will be pinned. But please say hello if you're just jumping on. I'm going to test, wait, I'm going to test Trey. It's not Trey. I'm it's starting probably, to. <laughs> probably, uh, um, the, uh, the sound. The sound? Yeah. I don't know. It's not me. It isn't. Okay. Well, anyways. So, hi, Clark. Hi to Lyle. Y'all, go get your communion elements. In the meantime, who has what? I have another blueberry muffin because I ate the first one out of anxiety earlier because I'm having <laughs> internet issues, which means my kids have to split the last one. They don't each get their own now. Sorry, guys. Uh, and coffee. Nice. Anyone else? I've got a chocolate chip cookie and Jim Beam Devil's Cut. Wow, <laughs> nice. Eva's over here eating uh, fudge brownies and grapes. I feel like she, she's she got the good stuff. She's holding, she's showing a grape. The fudge around her face gives it away. Will y'all let us know in the comments what you have for communion and uh, please do plan to join us for that in just a moment. I'm going to share some announcements. We have so much going on in the life of our community right now. And, um, and if you really want to be able to keep up with it, please DM me or DM us or put it in the comments because you need to be on our email list every week. Once a week, we send out an email with everything happening and it's just the best way to keep up with us. So uh, I will highlight a few things right now though. First off, um, our leadership team that oversees all the business of the church and supports the mission and the vision and helps the whole thing run and happen is called the Servant Leadership Council. And we have a few openings to fill. Um, so if you have any interest in serving in our leadership in that kind of a way, um, the SLC oversees our finances, our personnel, our, any legal things, our um, facilities, marketing, strategy, just the oversight of the whole church. If that's your cup of tea, let me know because we are going to recommend a few people to join it by uh, May 8th. And so sometime that first week of May, let us know if you have any interest. We do ask that you have been involved in our community 
uh, for a period of time, for enough time to understand who we are and how we work. Um, I believe the official time is like one year, but let me know if you're interested. Okay. Other announcements that are worth mentioning right now. We are meeting up at Hat Creek in Round Rock this Thursday at 530, just for a dinner meetup. Everyone's invited. There is a big play area for kids to run around. There's a lot of space outside and there's different options for different types of dietary preferences. So plan to join us this Thursday at 530. Also, this coming Sunday is Feed Your Soul Sunday, which means we're not having a Sunday gathering. Um, however, this Sunday, there will be a meetup at a park. Um, and you you need to get on our email to get those details. But basically, it is at, I think it's right there on the yeah Lakewood Park, Sunday, May 1st. And I think it's from 9 to 1, just dropping in any time. But again, get on our email list so you can see all the details about that. Okay, a few other things, and then we'll continue on. Um, we have a writing cohort. I don't know if y'all knew that, but we do. And we um, are opening that up again and starting to share about it again as we move into uh, a new season with it, led by our friend and uh, part of our community, Joel Jordan, who is a writer also. Um, it is called We Who Write. And the meetup, the next meetup is on May 7th at Lark and Owl. And we would love to uh, to have you. We also have a new book group that is going to be coming in May and it's uh, Jesus and John Wayne. Let's see what the subtitle is. It's how white evangelicals corrupted a faith and fractured a nation. So if you're interested at all, order that book and read uh, the first part of it. Get on our email list so you can know the schedule. Um, but we're going to have that meeting is going to begin in uh, on May 9th. Those are going to be Mondays in May, June, and July, one meeting a month. So again, you need to get on this email list if you're interested. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing, there's two other things. I want y'all to um, save the date for Round Rock Pride on June 4th. This is Round Rock's first ever Pride uh, like festival and parade, and we want to be a part of it, and we're going to be a part of it with other faith communities. So save the date and plan to attend. If you want to help with planning, um, uh, join our planning team and let me know. Just put it in the comments. I want to be on the planning team, and I will find you. <laughs> so let us know if you want to be involved in that way. Um, and then finally, big news is that Matthew is taking a much needed sabbatical. Um, many of you remember I took a sabbatical last May. Matthew's going to take one this May. Matthew's been a part of our community since we started the church in 2012. So about 10 years of service to the church and a much needed break. So if you um, are hearing this, leave Matthew alone in the month of May. <laughs> and um, we're going to let him go off into a cave or uh, uh, and rest and do whatever he needs to do. So if you need anything from him, contact him this week. Otherwise, come find me, come find Jonathan. Um, Jana is always around. Any of our deacons, um, we're here for you, but let's let Matt rest in the month of May. So just FYI. Okay, that was a lot. I hope some of that uh, piqued your interest. I'm going to move us now into our actual gathering space. This is part of why we chime the hour so that we can move from all this to-do lists and into an intentional space of of gathering together in sacred community and divine proximity. So I'm going to change my sound um, settings so that this chiming doesn't sound too crazy for you. And I wanted to remind us all that Earth Day was on Friday, April 22nd. We actually have a beautiful reflection this morning that you can see on the screen while I'm chiming. And uh Joyce, one of our deacons and our amazing, incredible church mama and youth group leader, wrote this reflection. She wrote this poem and actually shared it with us in our writing group. And we wanted to share it with you all this morning. So while I chime, I invite you to read and reflect on her words. And thank you for being here.
Good morning, guys. Um, I'm Tiffany. I'm Eva. And we uh, get to help with the children's sermon this morning. We're super excited. We hope that your morning is going well. It feels so good outside. Um, so we wanted to see if um, you guys have, if y'all enjoy reading books. And if you do, if you have um, read any books lately that you've enjoyed, or maybe it's one of your favorites ever, um, if you want to uh, comment and the, the link so that we can check those books out. It's always kind of uh, neat to hear what other people are reading and enjoying, gives us ideas. Uh, we were going to uh, read a book to you guys this morning that we've really liked. You want to tell them what it's called? The title is Mother God. And we've, we've really enjoyed this lately, so we <laughs> wanted to share with y'all. Okay. Mother God. It's by Teresa Kim uh, Penonsky and illustrated by Koa Lee. A really beautiful illustration so we'll do our best to share okay you know god the father but god is your mother too you're made in her image she is making all things new she takes deep breaths until the birth rejoicing with friend and neighbor Throughout the day and night, God wakes to nurse the infant at her side. She snuggles her baby gently until he closes his sleepy eyes. When baby tumbles on the floor, God pulls off each tiny sock. She holds her arms out wide and the baby learns to walk. God is Sophia, wisdom teaching what is true and right. Wisdom works, creates, orders, and plays. She calls us with joy and delight. Over the waters of creation, God is the spirit who hovers. She forms the earth into a bed and the wide sky it covers. God is a mother hen who gathers chicks under her wings she plays hide and seek in her soft grass behind trees and quiet springs. She protects her cubs from danger. God, the great mother bear, as fierce as she is tender, she guards them in her care. God is a lurking leopard, secretive, skilled, and strong, teaching her young to swim and climb. She roars and they tag along. With a huge supply of flour, God kneads and bakes good bread. She feeds her entire neighborhood. They feast and are all fed. God is a skillful seamstress who stitches and sews threads together. She makes cloths for rain, snow, and sun, caring for you in all kinds of weather. Granny, Baba, how Moni. You had to look that one up. That's grandma in Korean. God is a woman with gray hair. She passes down stories of old, rocking softly in a chair. She is the God who sees you. God weeps, mourns, and cries. She comforts you through the longest night, keeping watch until sunrise. She quiets us with her song, singing lullabies in the night. God, our nurturing mother, wraps us in the holy moonlight. God is your loving mother. You were made in her image, too. God, God calls you beloved. She is making all things new. In the end. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did, and we look forward to checking out your favorite books you've read, read lately. Thank you, Tiffany and Eva. That was a beautiful book. Uh, I really want to get that, actually. And thank you to Joyce for that poem. Um, okay, I was going to say, why is Aurelia here? Get out of here. This is my turn, Aurelia. <laughs> it's not her fault. Uh, it's no one's fault. We don't have to use blame language around here. 
Uh, moving on. So <laughs> fr Friday was Earth Day, as uh, as has already been discussed, and um, and I wanted to do the communion reflection around that this morning. Uh, this is not part of the communion reflection per se, but I, I just wanted I wanted to say I'm often reminded that we can't consume our way out of the climate challenges and the degradation of the earth that we are experiencing and are contributing to. So, so just a reminder that um, a lot of the initiatives and ideas you see are about consuming the right things. And I would offer to you the best solution perhaps is to consume less, to learn to live on less. So that's from Matthew, your Earth Day thought. Now, I actually wanted to read a poem from the poet Joy Harjo, poet laureate of the U.S. at one point, uh, a fantastic poet. I just love her. Um, and her poem is entitled Remember, and that feels appropriate for communion. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. But her poem is Remember by Joy Harjo. Remember the sky that you were born under. Know each of the stars' stories. Remember the moon. Know who she is. Remember the sun's birth at dawn, that it is the strongest point of time. Remember the sundown and the giving away tonight. Remember your birth, how your mother struggled to give you form and breath. You are and her mother's and her mother's. Remember your father. He is your life also. Remember the earth whose skin you are. Red earth, black earth, yellow earth, white earth, brown earth. We are all earth. Remember the plants, trees, animal life who all have their tribes, their families, their histories too. Talk to them. Listen to them. They are alive poems. Remember the wind. Remember her voice. She knows the origin of this universe. Remember you are all people and all people are you. Remember you are this universe and this universe is you. Remember all is in motion, is growing, is you. Remember language comes from this. Remember the dance that language is that life is. Remember. Remember by Joy Harjo. I invite you at this time to join me in our liturgy of communion as we celebrate this and practice this as Jesus commanded in remembrance of him and in the many ways that we are called to remember, re-put back together, remember this world. I'll read the regular font and we'll all join in together in the bold. God is within you. God is within you. Lift up your hearts. We join. Let us give thanks for the blessing of life. I invite you at this time to take your communion elements as I offer a prayer for us. Our God, we do want to remember, certainly remember the work and the life of Jesus, but also remember this world as in put it back together with your help to remember it. <clears throat> By your power and your spirit, help us to do that work with boldness and creativity and above all, love. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to play a song that's simply called Belonging. And I got to multitask a little bit before I get started. I just dumped the lyrics to the song in the Facebook chat if you're interested in reading or if you need help following along. And now I'm going to change my microphone so that it sounds better. 
and I hope that this song is a blessing to you. The sermon today is about belonging, and that's what our new sermon series is about for the next several Sundays. Here we go. Belonging came before belief With all creation in your care Speaking words of goodness, words of peace Forming and creating as you breathed When belonging came before belief Open our hearts to love even when it's tough to set an open table offering your grace we're not giving up we're taking hold of a future without labels creating a space where belong comes before belief. Longing came before belief. With how you taught and how you led. When you beg and dog, come follow me. Calling strangers who were enemies When belonging came before belief Open our hearts Open our minds And help us to love Set an open table, offering your grace. We're not giving up, we're taking hold of a future without labels, creating a space where belonging comes before
Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow, Jonathan, that was really good. Um, grateful to have you with Peace of Christ. So today's reading is from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We hear the voice of God through these words. Thanks be to God. It would help if I muted my mic. There we go. Hey, buddy. I'll see you a little bit, okay? Got a little company here. So the next reading is from John's Gospel. It's the lectionary text for the day, and it's from John chapter 20, beginning in verse 19. Hear these words now from the scripture. In the evening of the same day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were for fear of the temple authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Having said this, the Savior showed them the marks of crucifixion. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw Jesus, who said to them again, Peace be with you. As Abba God sent me, so I am sending you. After saying this, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you retain anyone's sins, they are retained. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, nicknamed Didymus, or twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen Jesus. Thomas' answer was, I'll never believe it without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into the spear wound. On the eighth day, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them, saying, Peace be with you. Then to Thomas, Jesus said, Take your finger and examine my hand. Put your hand into my side. Don't persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, My Savior and my God. Then Jesus said, You've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed other signs, many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of the disciples. But these have been recorded to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the only begotten, so that by believing you may have life in Jesus' name. We hear the voice of God through these words. When I was a kid, my parents homeschooled me and my brother for several years. I don't know if any of you had that experience. Audrey, my wife, was homeschooled. And my dad's sister and her husband, my uncle and aunt, also homeschooled their five children. And my parents and aunt and uncle devised a plan to get in on the booming chicken industry in Texas. The Tyson Chicken Company was planning to open about 10 new chicken farms in Texas, and my uncle 
had a dream of owning one of these chicken farms and our families working the farm together. Joy. We would have all moved away from the Houston area basically to live out our existence in isolation from the influence of the liberal city, ensuring that all the kids in both families grew up with the right fundamentalist evangelical values and gender identities. When I was 13, my parents sold their home and we moved to a small little town on Highway 21 called North Zulch, Texas. We left our single family suburban home for a rented single wide trailer. My understanding at the time was that when the financing was complete for the farm, we would move again and begin our life on the farm. I find it ironic at this point in my own journey that my entire family had decided to escape the dangers of the liberal city by starting life over on a chicken farm. I remember two things about the year that we lived in North Zulch. My parents got divorced and I felt as alone and isolated as I ever probably had in my life. After my dad moved out, my mom had to find work and we weren't homeschooling anymore. And when I went to public school in North Zulch, I ended up skipping a grade. So I skipped eighth grade. I played basketball before we moved. And as it turns out, not only did I skip a grade, I was given a spot on the varsity basketball team in North Zulch, Texas, which doesn't say much for my basketball skills. Now, all this may sound great on the face of things, but in reality, I was bullied daily probably because I was the new kid from the city. I didn't feel welcome at all. And two incidents stand out in my head about that year in that school. The first was I got into a, a fight in biology class because another student kept walking by and hitting me in the back of the head. Um, and I lost my temper and uh, my emotions got out of control. And the other thing that I remember is people, uh, sorry if this grosses you out, literally peeing on my shoes in the locker room before basketball practice. And I put my foot into that wet shoe and then it occurred to me uh, what had happened. It was a little on the gross side. Before we moved away from that, town, um, an older student who was a senior in high school tried to hit me with his truck while I was skateboarding from school back to the trailer that we were living in. The truth is, I could have lived in that town for 30 years and never felt a sense of belonging. I would always be an outsider, always find myself othered. Unfortunately, many people have the same experience in churches. Sociologists call this phenomenon in-grouping and out-grouping. And it happens in religious circles all the time. Ask the wrong questions in a Sunday school class and you might find yourself in the out-group. Come out to your family or to your youth group and face judgment and ostracization. Practice uh, or express displeasure with racial or economic injustice and face the ire of white fragility and fealty to consumerism. In the passages that we read in today's service, the actions of Jesus in the text reveal a radical truth that is often forgotten in the church, that in the way of Christ, belonging comes before belief. Even by the end of the first century, following Christ became more about subscribing to a certain set of truth claims than the expression of radical love and grace. And by the third century, the emergence of the apostles and the Nicene Creed solidified that belief comes before belonging. Jesus appears to the disciples in Matthew's gospel and states in verses 16 and 17, the, the text reads, the 11 disciples went to Galilee 
to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Have you ever noticed that in the Great Commission passage? As I recall in all the sermons on the Great Commission I ever heard in my fundamentalist upbringing, those sermons were really just exercises in conservative, colonialist, evangelical certainty and triumphalism. When many of us were small children, meaning many of us in Peace of Christ Church, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, the tradition of my own upbringing, had a famous but I believe ill-named campaign to take the gospel to every people group on earth by the year 2000. The name of the program was Bold Mission Thrust. It seems to me that highlighting verse 17 was never a part of the mission strategy, that when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Jesus sends out those with their own doubt concerning the resurrection itself to make disciples. He included and counted them as disciples, even though their beliefs were in various places or even all over the map. In John's Gospel, we read that the resurrected Jesus appears in two instances to the disciples who have locked themselves in a room. In the first instance, Thomas wasn't there and says to his excited friends, I'll believe it when I see it. Thomas probably thought they were crazy. I mean, really, I was a pastor at two different churches and a youth minister before that for a decade. I've done a lot of funerals. And if somebody came to me and said, uh, you know, the person that we just buried, we saw them walking around the grocery store and they said hi to us. I would think that they're crazy. And so Thomas for nearly 2000 years has been othered by the church with the title doubting Thomas. Don't be a doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas didn't have enough faith. Poor Doubting Thomas. <laughs> he should have been called Reasonable Thomas, or Sober Thomas, or Realist Thomas, or even Refuses to be Duped Thomas. The fact is, whatever manner Jesus appeared to them, Jesus had nothing but grace for Thomas. Jesus continues to include Thomas. In fact, before that, Jesus even included Judas at a table. Jesus called people to be his disciples that were Roman tax collectors and zealots to political tribes that often wanted to kill each other. He never told anybody, get your beliefs just perfect, and then you can be one of my disciples. He wasn't asking that rich young ruler when he said, sell all of your possessions and give them to the poor, and then the guy went away sad. He wasn't asking the rich young man to change his beliefs. He was asking him to surrender his status, which allowed him to ostracize and other those created in God's image. In the way of Jesus, belonging comes before belief. Inclusion comes before dogma. Welcome and extravagant love come before creeds and propositional truth claims. I believe the real barrier many people have in following Jesus is not a failure to subscribe to dogmatic beliefs. It's a failure to set an open table. In verse 29 of John's gospel in chapter 20, Jesus says, You've become a believer because you saw me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We may think in reading and hearing these words that there is no blessing for Thomas. The way John writes his gospel, unbelief is to be highly avoided. Now, don't hear me saying this morning that belief is a bad thing. 
But do hear me saying that there is a blessing for Thomas. The other disciples made room for him. Jesus welcomed him without judgment. In the story, as John recounts it, Thomas is the only one who reaches out to actually touch Jesus. What if our questions and even our doubts lead to greater proximity to one another and also to Jesus? What if our church, this beautiful community, continues to be an outpost of the Jesus way, where belonging comes before belief? Amen. Hi, I'll be leading us in the Litany of Belonging. It's uh, adapted from a writing from the Center for Action and Contemplation. I'll read the regular print and you can join in the response in the bold. And it mirrors a lot of what Jonathan was saying. That open table, I love that idea. I mean, what if we, we have to continue doing what we're doing here, keeping that open table. Okay, I'll begin today. I'll, I'll, I'll get started. We gather today under the banner of belonging. People of African descent, of Asian descent, of European descent, of First Nations, descent from this and abroad, and people of mixed and multiple descents, and of all the languages spoken here. I belong. I belong. People in all parts of the continuum of, ge of gender identity and expression, including those who are gay, bisexual, heterosexual, trans transgender, cisgender, queer folks, the sexually active, the celibate, and everyone for whom those labels don't apply. I um, Bodies with all abilities and challenges those living with any chronic medical condition, visible or invisible, mental or physical. I People who identify as activists and those who don't. Mystics, believers, seekers of all kinds, people of all ages. I Your emotions, joy, fear, grief, contentment, disappointment, surprise, and all else that flows through you. I Your families, genetic and otherwise, those dear to us who have died, our ancestors and the future ones, the ancestors who lived in this land, in this place, where these buildings are now, we honor you through the work that we undertake. I People who feel broken, lost, struggling, who suffer from self-doubt and self-judgment. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you to everybody who uh, led today's gathering. Um, that was such a good sermon, Jonathan. I cannot wait to go listen to it again. I will absolutely be listening to it again, and you all can listen to it again on our podcast on either Spotify or Apple Podcasts and also look forward, forward to sharing quotes. I was like, oh, I wanna share that quote. Oh, I wanna share that quote when we post them on social media this week. So thank you so much, Jonathan, for the thoughtfulness and engaging that story with us on this second uh, Sunday of Easter. I am going to read a poem, lots of poetry today. Hey, I think April's like poetry, Awareness Month or something, <laughs> National Poetry Month, whatever. Um, so I've got a poem for you all for the benediction. And I chose this poem just because I know that so much is out of our control and so much is is dark and heavy and 
a lot and chaotic these days. Um, so I chose this poem with that in mind. I hope it speaks to you as we step out of this space together and go on about our days and our weeks. Uh, this poem is called When Life Seems a To-Do List, and it's by Marjorie Sazer. When the squares of the week fill with musts and shoulds, when I swim in the heaviness of it, the headlines, the fear and hate, then with luck, something like a slice of moon will arrive clean as a bone, and beside it on that dark slate, a star will lodge near the cusp. And with luck, I will have you to see it with, the two of us. Fools stepping out the back door in our pajamas. Is that Venus? I think so. Let's call it Venus, cuddling up to the moon. And there are stars further away, sending out rays that will not reach us in our lifetimes, but we are choosing before the chaos starts up again to stand in this particular light. People of peace, you are sent. We'll see you Thursday and, and all our many activities to come. Have a great day. Bye, y'all.